So here we go with another photo analysis and this one um, I'm recording this just after the anniversary of the formation of the Machine Gun Corps October the 14th so I wanted to do something that was Machine Gun Corps related and uh, this photo is but it isn't because it identifies a, a member of the Motor Machine Gun Service and it's taken here we go, a puppy, the mascot of Motor Machine Gun Corps unit, seated on a Vickers machine gun, manned by a troop of the regiment, 1915. And it's taken by 2nd Lieutenant Barclay, who took a, a series of photos uh, in this Q series. They're all within two or three of each other. Uh, but before we get into the analysis, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a lovely photo. It's one of my favourite. You know, dogs sat on machine guns for some reasons, yeah, you know, and much cuter than they should be. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll do some detailed analysis of it, but I won't discuss the dog because I'm not even sure what breed it is. Uh, so let's get on with some analysis. So first things first, what unit are we looking at? Well, the caption said the Motor Machine Gun Corps, which this seems to be. Uh, a much earlier photo actually of the motor machine gun service although the cap badge here is the uh, crossed vickers machine guns here with the crown above and the mmg underneath there uh, that was actually in use before the machine gun corps was formed and these were men of the royal field artillery that were so you know, part of the were transferred into the motor machine gun service and you can see the shoulder title there these are quite commonly found as reproductions originals are extremely expensive uh, but it just says motor machine guns and let's say the motor machine gun service were you know, on motorcycles uh, with sidecars one of the you know th this chap is sat behind the machine gun that's in the sidecar here uh, I, I'm not sure on the type of motorcycle this is however from other photos it could be a Scott uh, motorcycle what is interesting though is that we have let's say this man of the motor machine gun service prior to the formation of the machine gun corps but there are some characteristics of the Vickers machine gun that are in in, in service here that are um, not unique, uh, but are extremely rare. You have this foresight, uh, sorry, this rear sight here over the feed block cover. Now, this is a, I believe it's pronounced Peri Uh So it's Capoluccio, something like that. Uh, it will be in the description of the video. So with the spelling and, and, and you can do the uh, pronunciation. But this, this sight here, it, it's a bit like the small magazine Lee Enfield rifle sight. So this piece moves forward or back along the stem so that it raises the rear sight there um, you know, up and down. Now, it, you don't get much um, you know, range on that. It's not the British service Maxim sight. This is the commercial Vickers that was trialled uh, for, uh, for the British Army trials. And changing this sight was one of the requirements of the trial. So it had to be changed to, to be the full British service tangent site that went along the back of the, uh, the rear top cover there, not the, not the, uh, the front cover. So to, to see this in place is quite, quite unique, uh, you know, quite rare. You do see it on these motor machine gun service, uh, photos from this period because it's believed that they purchased them separately outside of a war office contract so by this time in the war we only had about oh, I think it's around a thousand Vickers machine guns produced but this particular pattern had been in production by Vickers since 1908 so this is the 1908 light, um, light model machine gun from Vickers it's not the British service um, Vickers that was introduced in 1912 some of the other changes are this shape of the uh, the rear stop there, the tripod stop. Now this piece of um, this piece of uh, metal there stops the um, gun slamming down on the tripod crosshead too much. Now it's it's not mounted on the tripod crosshead in this piece because it's mounted onto the uh, onto a, a separate mounting of of the um, of the motorcycle and sidecar. Yeah, that may be the tripod in there actually, but it, it could be clamped in. Whatever it is, it's not a British service tripod. 
so what you have is you do have this on british service tripods but it's much shorter and squatter it's sort of only like that uh, you do see it sectioned out on the early light light model guns uh lightened guns so that it does save that little bit of weight but this is yeah this is characteristic of the uh commercial class c vickers uh let's say that 1908 pattern as well all the other functions are largely similar um you know the uh the, the fluted uh water jacket there the uh gentleman is wearing his service dress and it looks like he's got a lanyard down for something not really sure what in this case uh, but he's got his lanyard running down there um he's a staff sergeant um let's say they were on the scale rank scales and um pay scales of the royal field artillery they were not part of the uh the the, the uh the infantry or the, the the motors the machine gun corps motors was formed from the motor machine gun service at the time of formation of the machine gun corps in october 1915 14th of october the motor machine gun service was transferred into that so let's say this cap badge carries on it becomes the inspiration uh, for the uh, machine gun corps cross machine guns cap badge uh, they these titles remain in service for a little while but what you end up seeing is m g c and m uh, in the shoulder titles there in brass actually a bit more than the cloth titles so you know it, it's an interesting unit at this point and it's one of the interesting uh problems that when you get into heritage and uh yeah, antecedent regiments of, of the army obviously you yeah, know the tank regiment looks back to the machine gun corps so the heavy branch of the sorry royal tank regiment back to royal tank corps back to tank corps back to heavy branch of the machine gun corps back to heavy section of the machine gun corps which was formed from the motor machine gun corps um which was formed from the royal field artillery uh, sorry from the room from the motor machine gun service which was formed from the royal field artillery so you've got artillery lineage in in, in uh everything there which is which is an interesting um you know dynamic uh when looking at antecedent regiments um what else to point out obviously he, 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 you know it, it's nice to see him wearing a wristwatch there's uh you've got this case on the back of the um bike there which is on the back of all of them um and there's some other photos as well where you can see it on the back of the bikes it it seems to be just a, a standard sort of leather box for spare parts or, or um, tools but it's not the early spare parts and tools box for the vickers machine gun that was in leather so the the wooden box the mark ii that we normally see there's actually a there's actually a mark one wooden box and then the spare parts box for the vickers is actually a uh, the original was for was a leather box of a similar dimension um got the ammunition belt coming through here you can see you know nothing special about that it's just the standard strip type ammunition belt um and i think that's probably it so we'll call it a day as i said i don't know the breed of the dog uh probably something belgian um, it looks small, it looks yappy, terrier-like, um, probably more vicious than the machine gun. So, you know, speaking of somebody that's got a terrier, I know the you know, machine guns bite me every time that I go near them, and it always make me bleed, but uh, so does the terrier. So they're well suited in this environment. Um, just as a, actually, just as a point, this, uh, what I've just noticed in the shadow, do we think that this is actually a cap cover? in here over a service dress cap it looks to be it could be a, a cloth cover you can just see the line going around there um now i'm not really sure what that would be uh possibly just just a, a working cover uh to protect the the hat from oil marks so if you're working with equipment taking the cap um taking the cap on and off all the time this peak's going to be become quite oily and uh, dirty so maybe maybe it that's what it's for um maybe it's to signify a role in the uh in the uh, unit as well so these were organized as mo uh, to, to to build on the royal field artillery lineage mm motor machine gun batteries uh were the with the unit name so an mmg battery so you know maybe the the, the cap cover uh, also draws on that royal artillery lineage as well
so yeah, something, a bonus at the end there. Uh, I hope that's been of interest again. Do let us know if there are any photos uh, that you want to see. Do click down in this bottom corner where you should be seeing a uh, subscription button uh, somewhere around this area to make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and get the updates when these go live in the future. Thank you for all your support and please do join on Patreon if you can. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.